good afternoon, Facebook friends. Started the broadcast a couple of minutes early, right here on the edge of the salt marsh close to the visitor center at the Tijuana Estuary. We started it early because we have a lot of competition today with wind and a helicopter. Hi, Bob, how are you? I would love some feedback on the sound. I anticipate today's broadcast to be a little challenging in the audio department, but hopefully not. I've got my back to the wind. Oh, great, sound is great. And the wonderful view for you guys, our, our audience, guys and girls, out here at what we call the first overlook. Uh, they're just south of the visitor center off of the North McCoy Trail here at the Tijuana Estuary. Just giving you a little sense of place. I've got my back to the wind. I will flip the camera around for a minute to introduce myself again and introduce the program. But here we are. Welcome to the Tijuana Estuary. Beautiful day. Live from the edge of the salt marsh on a low tide. A low tide this, this noon time. You see we have a small audience at the moment. Uh, I thought I'd pan around. I hope that's a good shot. I know things are looking a little crooked. crooked. I'm not on level ground at the moment. You can get a sense of where we are. There's the sports park for those of you who know us here at the Tijuana River National Estuary Research Reserve. And there's the bridge on the North McCoy Trail. But today's program, we will be getting down on the ground. I know we call it time to slime. We're at <laughs> today's program, we won't be sliming. We'll be getting down on the ground with the California horn snail. And there is a small area here where we're gonna get up close and personal. However, it is in the salt marsh. This is not the time of year where we want to really spend a lot of time doing that, which is why I'm up here on the edge while we get ready to start giving you some of those scenery shots if you haven't been down here before. And there we are looking south at the border. So feel free to uh, say hello, give me thumbs up, feedback, ask questions. I'll pause for the delay and I will show my face very quickly. Hi everyone. Hi, I'm Maria, education specialist here at the Tijuana River National Estuarine Research Reserve. Hi, John. And I'm standing out here on the uh, first overlook of the North McCoy Trail, getting ready to get down on the ground with today's, <laughs> today's lunchtime live star, the California horn snail. The California horn snail, Cerithidiopsis californica. I had to learn that. I, it, the name changed sometime in the last couple of years. Cerithidiopsis californica. And this is a, a, a species that's no longer with us. I mean, meaning this individual. Huh, this is a, a dead Cerithidiopsis californica horn snail. But I just wanted to show you the sh shell. I've got the macro. We're gonna get down on the ground. We're gonna get out the macro and we're gonna explore this. Yeah, not an I know, Cerithidiopsis, Lorena. Luckily, it's close. The old one was Cerithidia. Hi, Mark. Thanks for joining us. All right, so if you're joining us later, if you're joining now, feel free, comments, questions related to the topic, you can ask them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. All right, so let's get, let's get uh, down on the ground with, uh, with uh, California horn snail. But first, you can see this is a snail. It's, um, it's a, what we call a gastropod. Those are our snails and slugs and nudibranchs. Okay. Um, and we'll get down and look at some characteristics. I, I, I really kind of want to get out of the wind a little bit. So let me flip this back around 
And when we get down on the ground, that should help. I can't do anything about the helicopters, but that's where we're going, right there on the edge. So let me move us a little closer. And by the way, if you were tuned in last week when we were talking about the yellow shore crab, Hemigrapsis uh, oregonensis, I mentioned uh, the fiddler crab as well. And that is, by the way, let me just show you real quick. This one. This area where we're about to go is teeming with fiddler crabs. And as soon as I approach, they're gonna go into their holes. But maybe if I sit there for a while, they will uh, show themselves again. So let's get down on the ground. And as you can see, you might start to see that there are what we might see, what might look like rocks, pebbles, kind of littered on the edge of the estuary, the salt marsh here. This is the classic uh, location for <clears throat> uh, horn snails. They, they are found um, you know, in our estuaries at uh, these mud flat areas. You can see them on the kind of the high tide line, um, sort of like a bathtub ring. We see, we see all those there. So these are uh, found from, I think, Central California down into Baja, California horn snail. Okay. And uh, so that's where you'll see them. So if you're standing maybe on the bridge um, here at the Tijuana Estuary and looking over, you'll see them quite a bit over there. And if you've got binoculars, you can, you can actually focus in on them um, and watch them move. So I, I scouted out this area. Most of these, actually almost all of these, I believe are not alive with us um, <clears throat> today. That's typical as well when they're up this high. So let's get us down on the ground. So how many of you are familiar with the California horn snail? This is a very uh, dominant, uh, makes up like the dominant, what we call like the biomass, okay, when it comes to species. Um, animal species here in these salt marshes. They are so prolific, as you can see. Can you all see those littering the mud there? California horn snail. And you might even notice those little holes. Okay, that's where <laughs> you don't know any personally, right? I know. For <laughs> the there are so many of them, but we don't actually know them, right? Uh, but see those, see those holes? Those are the burrows of the fiddler crab. So they, they, they went down when I, when I moved over, but uh, maybe they'll pop back up. So I do want to get down on the ground so we can get a little closer. And I've got the one in my hand. Here you can see California horn snail gets about, oh, an inch or so in, you know, long the shell about an inch, so this one's smaller than an inch, okay? Dark in color. When you see them lighter like that, that's uh, their, their bleach. So these are uh, horn snails that will, good question, how long do they live? Yes, they can live up to 10 years, six to 10 years. So they're a spiral-shaped shell, the gastropod, which is a characteristic of gastropods. So this is like, you know, imagine like a, a slug or a garden snail, but, but with a spiral shaped shell, okay, um, about an inch long, um, and also has that, oops, sorry, that what we call that muscular foot. Okay, so that, um, that uh, soft body, more like a muscle um, that we might think of as their body, that's their loco, that's the way they move. There's locomotion, it's more like a creep. Um, but our garden snails, they have, they'll have like the slime. These guys don't really slime, to my knowledge. Um, I don't think they need to. They're, these are aquatic, a salt marsh gastropod, a salt water species of gastropod. Now, th there are uh, snails like gastropods that, you know, in our freshwater environments or, um, <clears throat> now let me get, sorry, I'm gonna actually gonna sit down on the ground here my macro lens so we can look at a few more of these and uh, so many of these here I'm trying to locate my macro lens 
Um, what we didn't see in that individual, and I will put the macro on now, so that we can see a little better, is, there we go. In that location where there is that hole where their, um, where their actual body uh, comes out, uh, head and, 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 and their foot, uh, there is what we call a, an operculum, a trap door that um, seals the chamber so that the California horn snail um, can, uh, being a, can avoid uh, drying out during a low tide. So <clears throat> these, uh, these, these are dead, they've lost their operculum, but it's like a little, like a little trap door that they use to shut to um, pass the low tide, when it's low tide, so they can stay moist. Um, they can also do this to, to keep out fresh water if there's a fresh water intrusion for some reason. That's another benefit to the operculum and maybe even a defense um, when they are being eaten. So this is an organism, marine organism, estuary organism that feeds primarily on, on algae, on what we need to call our diatoms. Oh look, there's a it. Where'd it go? A little taking the sorry, I'm gonna do some I'm not seeing it through this, but I can see it in where is he? Are you guys seeing that isopod? Where is he? There he is. Oh there he is, sorry. I'm having a glare, so I'm not seeing that. But that <laughs> another salt marsh or estuary species, salt marsh species. Uh, many legs. All right, so back on with the macro. Okay. okay. Um, where was I? Was I talking about the operculum? The operculum keeps them moist, keeps them from, oh, from, from salt water, freshwater intrusion is maybe being uh, uh, protection from predators. But these are our decomposers, eating, like I said, diatoms, benthic diatoms, you know, that are um, on, the, on the ground. Those are, are plant-like uh, plankton. Um, they eat algae, they eat dead, de de dead de decaying material. So what we call detritus. So these are the decomposers. They are such an ecologically beneficial species in the salt marsh. Like I said, they're, they're, they have the most abundant biomass for their numbers. Okay. Um, they reproduce uh, March to about October um, is, their, is their sort of reproduction and growing season. And then in the winter, they stop. Okay. I wonder if you call it, if you can see them within their macro line. I wonder if you could see their parasites. Yes, I'll talk about their parasites in just a minute. <laughs> um, so these, the another ecological benefit to these is they are the uh, kind of what we call the uh, first host in uh, trematodes. Those are flukes or flatworms. I think 18, 19 species of trematodes require California horn snail right, um, as their first host. So either the snails eat the eggs of the trematodes or they are infected with kind of a larval stage of the, of the trematode um, uh, that then will develop to their next stage within the California horn snail. And what this can do to the California horn snail is, um, uh, is, is it's, since it's a parasite, okay, it stops reproduction in some of these. And I'm sorry, there is a term that's, uh, oh gosh, what's the term? Um, parasitic, oh dear, uh, castrate, of course. I don't use that word very often. There's a parasitic, parasitically castrate these species, okay? So that's their effect. Now, this sounds awful, right? 
but uh, parasites important to keep species in check, to keep populations in check. So I, I'm, I don't, these are all past. I, if I found a live one, I'd, I doubt we, I don't know if we could see the parasites in there, but uh, trematodes require California horn snail in their complex life cycle of multi-host um, requirements. So uh, trematodes uh, infect the horn snails and then from there they, they go to fish. I think they, they end up like cysts and then birds eat the fish. Okay, and the trematodes move on. So really, really important um, decomposer and host. Okay, let me see there. I was hoping one of the uh, fiddler crabs would come out. So again, they live about six to 10 years, even if they're infected. And um, you know, you can go down a wormhole reading about this stuff and um, they, uh, well, first I'll just say they, they're eaten again by, by um, you know, crabs and, and fish. Um, uh, and even our lovely Ridgeways rail will eat these. Not a lot of meat, but look how many there are. So many, you can get some protein and you gotta have a way to get that, that, that meat out of there. Um, they uh, are, they have a competitor. Uh, a, 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 a Japanese version of this that has been introduced, introduced uh, oh, probably almost a hundred years ago, uh, Northern California and Washington that has kind of made its way down um, and out competing these guys. Um, and they bring along their own, I think, trematodes that aren't native to here. So we are on the what? Look out for these, the Japanese horn snail, I think larger and better adapted. Oh, thank you for sharing this image. I'm seeing an image. Someone just wants to be Lorena sharing the life cycle. Thank you. This is really cool. I've never used that technology um, or seen that technology. So the Japanese horn snail, um, invasive species. So. That is something to watch for. Now, um, um, we our very own uh, uh, Julio, Dr. Julio Lorda, who uh, was a researcher here, uh, did his, I believe his master's work, a huge paper he wrote and study, a study and paper he wrote about the abundance and the um, distribution of the California horn snail. Did this in Santa Barbara, and Julio, if you're watching, I, I tried to read your paper. <laughs> it's long, um, but it was interesting. I didn't have the time, but the gist I got is that you know uh, these are species that require um, sunlight. Uh, if there's a lot of vegetation in a salt marsh, they don't do as well. They don't do as well. But you can see the abundance here. We see them on these mud flats. Um, I believe if you're studying them in the like the pickleweed and the cordgrass, you won't see them quite in the numbers that you see here. Okay, and um, uh, the um, these uh, then so then sunlight I guess uh, or is an is an issue. It can be a strain on their growth. Another thing I read about the. Um, about the trematodes, that, that there's been some studies that those that are infected with uh, the parasites uh, don't spend as much energy reproducing, so they can tend to grow a little bigger, um, and so even uh, get uh, uh, where we start to see giganticism um, in the, in the species. So very interesting. A lot to read about the California horn snail. Um, they're just, you know, that very distinct shape. Such an important decomposer here in the salt marsh. We love our decomposers. And no, I'm kind of pausing around waiting if there's a fiddler crab that would be brave enough to come out, but I guess I'm being too loud for there, so. All right, any questions? I didn't see any other questions. Thank you for sharing. Wow, that was really cool. I'll have to, can't wait to go back and re, and watch this. I saw that I think the the life cycle of the of the uh, 
crema toad or the horn snail um, being a very important role for those parasites. So let's see if there aren't any more questions. I apologize for the sun. I'm here down on the ground. <laughs> Uh, it's a wonderful day here at the Tijuana Estuary with the California horn, uh, California horn snail. Yeah, crabs are pretty cool. Um, oh, thanks, Cindy. I really like them too. They're never something I ever envisioned uh, creating, uh, but um, they've been a lot of fun and I love interacting with the audience. So if you're watching later and you have questions about the California horn snail, please chime in and I'll, I'll go back and answer them. And yeah, I couldn't really show you a live one today, a horn snail, I really don't wanna bother. I really should get away from the marsh um, uh, because the ones typically that are alive are gonna be a little more towards um, uh, uh, the mud, the wet mud out here, a little dry. So these have all probably been maybe eaten. Um, oh wait, there was one thing more I wanted to show you. Let's see. Do you have a little, little crab claw for ya? All right. Okay. Um, yeah, well, stay tuned for volunteers back at work, working on that. Okay. Yes. Okay, Joe, great. Yes. So I did mention this briefly. If you are at the, like a bridge or a place where you can see these, um, when they're, you know, in, uh, these are all dead, but when they're alive, like at the bridge, you can see them. You can actually see their trail, their footprint, right, um, from where they moved um, uh, as evidence that they do move. And if you're patient and you stare at one long enough, you'll actually see it move. So thank you, Joe, for, for pointing that out. All right. Okay. I will, won't take any more of your time today. <laughs> Thank you so much. Wonderful audience. I hope to see you again soon for our next lunchtime live. Um, or come down and see the horn snails for yourself. Or maybe we'll get, we'll let you know about those guided walks when they're coming. Hopefully soon. Okay. All right. Thanks everyone. Have a wonderful day.